Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Planet 13 stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if the stock is a buy or a sell. The company has a retail outlet near the Las Vegas Strip, which is the largest cannabis dispensary in the world. It serves an average of 3,600 customers per day. It's open 24 seven. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, market cap $563 million. They're trading at 376 a share and they have 152 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company, you estimate the future free cash flows, then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has negative free cash flow every year. Net income is a profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. They also have negative net income each year. Their revenue grew a lot from 2017 to 2019, but then it slipped a little in 2020, mainly due to COVID. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue. The trailing 12 month revenue was 61 million. Cost of revenue was 27.8 million. These are the costs directly related to making the company sales and their gross profit was 33 million. Their operating expenses were higher than their gross profit so they had negative operating income. This is common with a young company that invests a lot back into their business. Below that is the interest they paid in their debt minus the interest they received on their investments. Plus they had some other income of 254,000. So the company has negative net income every year. This is the statement of cash flows. And on the top is operating cash flow. And this is a better indicator of a company's health than net income. The way you calculate operating cash flow, you take net income and then you add back the non-cash items from the income statement. Depreciation is a common non-cash item. This company also paid its employees in equity compensation. So you have to add that back to the operating cash flow because that's a non-cash item. And the way you calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow minus capital expenditures. So they had negative free cash flow every year, but they do have positive operating cash flow in 2019 and the trailing 12 months. So the reason they had negative free cash flow is because they invested back into their business. Capital expenditures are generally a good thing because it means you're investing in your business to grow it later on. So in the future, this should provide them with more free cash flow. When you invest in a company, you would like to see them have positive free cash flow because that's how they pay you the investors in the form of dividends, or buying back stock. But if a company has negative free cash flow, I look at the operating cash flow and if that's positive, I consider that a good thing. But if the operating cash flow was negative, I'd be a little concerned. Of course, with this company, it's a young company, so I wouldn't be too concerned if they have negative operating cash flow. But if you invested in a business that's been in operation for 10, 20 years and they always had negative operating cash flow, that would be a big red flag. And the company issued $40 million of capital stock in 2018, another 5 million in 2019. Capital stock is either preferred or common stock. And it looks like they're paying down their debt, not issuing more debt. They paid down 11,000 in 2018, 1.2 million in 2019, and 2.2 million in the trailing 12 months. Let's look at a capital structure. They have $11 million of debt, 41 million of equity. They pay a really high interest rate in their debt, almost 14%. And 22% of their capital structure's debt, which means 78% is equity. Cost of equity is 22%. And to calculate cost of equity, we use a capital asset pricing model. And part of the CAPM formula is the beta. That's how volatile a stock is relative to the market. And they have a beta of 2.6, so the stock is really volatile. It moves more than two and a half times the market. And their WAC is 20.45%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows we also estimated terminal value which is all cash flows past year for that's 1.2 billion we discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital we get a value of the company of 818 million dollars we divide that by 152 million shares we get a calculated stock price of 539 they're trading at 376 so they're trading at a 30 percent discount it's a buy according to the model simply wall street doesn't have a value for this company the way simply Wall Street gets its valuation is based off of the average analyst estimate. So it appears not many analysts are covering this stock. So if you bought this stock when it IPO'd in 2018, it looks like it was trading around $1 a share. 
and the price has come up to almost four dollars so it looks like a really good return if you got it down here but the stock price can keep going up because the stock price is based off a of supply and demand of the market and if a lot of investors feel the stock will go up in the future they'll buy the stock now driving the price higher and higher so a lot of the momentum with cannabis stocks lately is based on whether the u.s will approve cannabis on a federal level right now it is approved on a state level in certain states but on a federal level, it's illegal. The company's retail shop is usually open 24 seven, but due to COVID, they have been limiting the hours and the number of people who can come in. So this is the reason their numbers are lower, but when COVID passes, I would expect their revenue to skyrocket. A big concern with investing in a company like this is that their product is illegal on a federal level. So the Drug Enforcement Agency or the IRS can anytime come in and shut them down. Even though cannabis is legal in the state of Nevada, it's illegal on a federal level, which doesn't seem to make much sense, but that's just how it is. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 14.8. The median is also 14.8. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have a negative price to earnings ratio. The average price of sales is 5.5, the median is 2.2. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They're at 9.4, so their ratio is worse than the median and average. The average price to book is 4.8, the median is 2.3. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're at 13.8, so their ratio is worse than the median and average. Equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet. The average interest coverage ratio is 12.3. The median is 3.8. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. Their ratio rounds to 1.0. It's actually slightly under one, so they cannot cover their interest payments, which could mean they may need to take on more debt to cover their interest payments. The average ROE in the market is 11%. The median is 12%. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so they have negative ROE. Average current ratio is 1.8. The median is 1.3. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can cover their current liabilities more than two times with their current assets. Of their 23 million of current assets, 12.8 million is cash, 6 million of inventory, and 3.5 million of prepaid assets. An example of a prepaid asset, say the company's rent was $100,000 a month and they paid for it a year in advance. So the 1.2 million you paid your landlord in rent, you will put that on your balance sheet as a prepaid asset. So each month you would reduce prepaid assets $100,000 and book it onto the income statement. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos of 12 companies in the same industry as Planet 13. And if Planet 13 has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse than all the price multiples negative price to earnings, their price to sales is a little worse than average, price to book is a lot worse than average. They seem to be doing well in current ratio 2.1. Even though their ROE is negative, it's a little better than the average, which is negative 29%. Their debt is lower than average at 22% debt, and their market cap is really small at half a billion. Average is 3.4 billion. And nobody in this industry pays a dividend. So to summarize, I do have them trading at a 30% discount because I see a lot of value in this company in the future, especially after COVID passes, but their ratios and financials look really weak because they're such a young company. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a customized valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.